Chapter 41, April 20th, 1943, Warsaw Ghetto By mid-afternoon, I began to see the first major flaw in our plan. We'd expected hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Germans, expecting them to separate as they searched the apartment buildings, one room at a time. In that way, we would divide and conquer, hence the knives and sharpened sticks and wires. But with one armored car, they'd made an entire street corner uninhabitable and instantly killed several hundred of our people, people who never had a chance to fight close up, people who never had a chance to defend themselves. We knew this was how it would, would end, didn't we? I knew it, and I didn't. I had never expected the scent of death to be so raw, the very air around us to be brittle as ice. I never expected to be the one, to be one of the fighters still on my feet when so many others, far more experienced than I, had fallen. For now, the fiercest fighting had moved into the, the brush maker's district, away from my area, which allowed me time to find Esther and Yitzhak. I hoped that wherever they'd gone, they were together, helping each other, keeping each other alive. I began searching bunkers, apartments, anywhere a person might hide, but it was no use. No one had seen them, and when Esther's name was mentioned, I got the response that made that maybe she joined the Nazis, like her father had. Since the day I met, met her, Esther has been fighting to save Jewish lives, I argued. She could have hidden, could have surrendered, or she could be sitting here in a bunker like all of you. You owe her more respect than this. That humbled them. It certainly humbled me. Esther had never been my burden for this mission. Not when I'd learned so much from her. By four in the afternoon, I'd made my way to Lesno Street in time to see an advancing tank occupied by an entire German column. I knew we buried a landmine just ahead, so I wouldn't waste my weapons here. Instead, I ducked into a nearby building that at one time had been a furniture store, where women in high heels might have stood for hours debating which cabinet best displayed their china. Now I waited beneath a hole where a window had once been, crouching on top of shards of shattered glass and empty bullet casings. Shia, somebody whispered. I turned to see Yitzhak headed towards me. Just Yitzhak. Where's Esther? He shrugged. I haven't seen her since this morning, but I was sent here. He lifted himself enough to look through the hole above us. When he lowered himself again, his face was darkened. It isn't going well. We can't hold out for much longer. The tank had passed us and was nearly at Smoka, Smoksa Street, where he, we'd planted the landmine. It was one of our key plans, to lure the largest group of soldiers here. I put a hand on Yitzhak's arm, and we peeked out the, the hole again. Then, let's make each moment count. Now watch. The explosion would be massive. But it crossed the street and nothing happened. Nothing. Not a puff of smoke, or a bump in the road, or any sign of trouble. A sinking feeling filled the room around me. The landmine had failed. This was a heavy disappointment, until someone inside the building said, All right then, let's take them down ourselves. Go! Nodding at each other, Yitzhak and I ran back onto the street. I had a gun in one hand and a Molotov cocktail in the other, waiting to be lit. I intended to use both. From one of the buildings above us, fighters were already dropping lit cocktails onto the, t the tank just as we had done the day before. The first five or six merely rolled off, but then one fell directly into a partially opened hatch. And after a, contain and after a contained explosion, smoke began rising. One soldier crawled out, badly burned. The rest didn't. The German soldiers on the street responded, firing weapons into every window of the tall buildings around them. The sound of shattering glass came at us in a terrifying pitch, and when larger pieces began falling near us, we ran. I heard an order given in German to shoot any captured Jews on the spot, as if they weren't already that that wasn't already their plan. 
gunfire echoed from every direction behind us towards us above and below some must be ours most of it would be theirs a bullet whisked over my shoulder too close a hair's difference in aim and i'd be dead in response we dropped lit molotov cocktails as we ran they'd create smoke to mask our escape and hopefully enough heat to discourage the soldiers from pushing through the smoke to chase us i knew why we had to throw them but hated to waste the waste of the, what some few supplies we had left so if i was going to throw mine i wanted to make it count i stopped turning just long enough to light my cocktail and took aim at the advancing german he dodged the worst of it but before i turned back an explosion lit into my leg knocking me flat on the ground i leaned up and saw blood spurting from my thigh almost like everything was happening in slow motion i'd been shot i'd been shot which came with an indescribable pain but far worse was the anger that i'd let it happen to me it wasn't supposed to be like this if i died in this battle when i died i needed to make my final moments count for something not this i wrapped my hand around the wound and felt yitzhak's hand beneath my arms dragging me away it's okay i muttered gritting my teeth against the fire in my leg it's okay it's not he dragged me inside a building out of immediate sight of the advancing germans but that left a trail of blood behind a road map to find us once we were inside he tried to lift me but I, I, it was a clumsy attempt that left me gasping and begging him to stop i tried to be firm the bossy older sister he used to know leave me here yitz they can't help me in the bunkers you don't know that i do if i saw someone with an injury on the streets i'd have to leave them and you have to leave me stop that we just need shia as the ducked her head into the building they told me you were in here they told me she stopped when she saw my leg oh no without a second's pause she she knelt beside me and removed her shoulder bag then used a knife to cut the handle off yet zach i need your water he had a half full bottle with him but immediately passed it to esther she poured it over the wound then pressed it on my thigh apologizing the entire time if it hurt i choked back the scream inside me gritting my teeth while she tried while she tied the shoulder bag's handle over the wound getting yitzhak's help with the knot she leaned closer and whispered i can see where the bullet entered and then exited we've got to stop the bleeding but any of the women in the bunker with a good sewing kit can take care of that let's go a sewing kit they'd stitch me up like a wool skirt i was already feeling nauseous at the thought of it then i remembered that the germans what the germans did to esther's hand how much more that must have hurt and i vowed not to complain any more about my injury at least not out loud once the column of germans passed yitzhak carried me back carried me out a back entrance of the building and down into a nearby bunker by the time they lowered me onto a bed my stomach was in knots yitzhak held my hand while esther explained what what needed to be done that's not necessary an older woman with a kind face and a nearly threadbare head scarf was already pulling out a needle and thread my name is rosa katz she said i can help you but you must be very different but you must be a very different kind of brave down here rosa katz why did that name sound familiar the question soon escaped my thoughts especially when alcohol was dumped over the wound and i wanted to leap out of my skin i was determined not to yell or cry out but when she stuck the needle in it hurt almost more than being shot esther had my hands and yitzhak held my leg down but that was just to keep me still not to comfort me i felt each stitch the stars swam in my vision but rosa continued to work mumbling phrases the entire time about how i needed to be strong minutes later the thread that was meant for darning socks and patching holes in pants closed a gash in my flesh she wrapped the leg with one of the bandages i'd brought with brought in here when we first came 
and offered me an aspirin. I wanted as many as was safe to take, but these two were rationed. I got one, only one. It would barely touch the pain I felt, but I swallowed it anyway. You've got to stay in the bunker now, Yitzhak said, and we're needed out there. I can help. I wasn't sure how, but I was useless in here, Esther smiled. Remember the advice you gave me once? Sometimes the best help you can give is to stay out of the way. She was right. And besides, I couldn't stand on my leg right now, much less fight on it. Ripples of pain ran in the currents, in currents throughout my whole body, and I was having trouble keeping my eyes open. Outside on the streets, the fighting continued amid shouts and screams, explosions, and the sounds of vehicles that seemed to roll almost on top of our underground bunker, crowded entirely with women and a few children. Together we, put, we, put, we, we prayed, held one another close, and talked in soft voices about what would happen when we were discovered. When, not if. A pretty young mother leaned in to me and whispered, Those who are captured up there are, going, are being arrested. Or is it worse? For the first time since I joined the resistance, I lied to my own people. They've been arrested, nothing more. For now, they're fine. Everyone who heard me breathed an audible sigh of relief, and the tension in the bu bunker calmed. I shouldn't have lied. These people deserve to know the truth. But the truth would do them no would do them more harm than good. And as they settled in for the night, so did I. The sound of gunfire and explosions above me became nothing more than a backdrop to my dreams. Chapter 42 April 21st, 1943, Warsaw Ghetto. I slept all night and for most of the next day. At some point during that time, I got up long enough to try balancing on my injured leg, but it collapsed. When I tried again that afternoon, I could stand and even hobble about with a little help, which was good enough for me. I asked for my knapsack. You're not going back out there, the older woman who stitched me up said. What was her name again? Rosa Katz. I remembered. With a smile, I touched her arm. I met your son in Lodz. A spark appeared in her eyes. My son? He's still alive? He wants you to know that he loves you and that you were right. It was all I had to say. She nodded. Mothers always are. She put her hand over mine and it rested on her arm. Our children never know how much we love them. I thought again of my parents. Did they know that I loved them? Did they think to, of me in their last moments? I wish they could have known Yitzhak was still alive. It would have given my mother so much peace. Now you must get back to bed, Miss Katz was already le leading me there. I started to protest, but she added, you'll only get in the way out here, back in bed. Thirty people were crowded into this bunker, with only one bed available. Whoever was supposed to have their turn in it right now, I doubted they wanted me still using it. At the same time, it felt good to have a mother again, even for just one night. And her advice must have been wise. Within minutes, I was asleep again. I awoke later the same evening to the sound of static filling the air. The woman in here had my radio and were trying to find a signal to connect them to the outside world. Finally, they caught a broadcast in English from the BBC in London, and the young mother began translating for the rest of us. The reporter was describing some sort of con conference with several European and American leaders. They were discussing what should be done for the Jews still trapped in the Nazi-occupied Europe. The Allies had almost completely ignored us thus far, it was astonishing that they even bothered to meet on, meet on our behalf. For two minutes, the reporter blathered on about the complex issues surrounding our situation and about Allied priorities and disagreements, but he said nothing about solutions, about the death camps, or even about basic compassion. I scowled. It sounds like the only thing these leaders agree on is that there are Jews in Europe. 